Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. I've got Alan and Tanya Thick joining me because we're talking about the new season of Unusually Thick on Pop TV. Get ready for a great day behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. All right, maybe the greatest show title on the history of the planet belongs to you, Alan and Tanya. And usually think, I'm like, you've got to be in pitch meetings and you're like, all right, this is the title for the show. And they're like, this is bought. We're good to go. Is that how it happened? Please uh, watch. I, they asked me for uh, uh, about 20 titles and I gave them a list and this was not my first choice. I would have... I would have been more old school, I would, you know, in the thick of things, the thick of it, et cetera. Uh, and uh, Unusually Thick was at the bottom of my list, but they pointed out cleverly that uh, uh, to make it a little awkward might be more memorable, like Arrested Development, Curb Your Enthusiasm, bam. We said, okay, let's I go. I know, I was so confused. I'm like, really? Out of all the genius <laughs> titles that my husband came up with, you're, you guys want to use Unusually Thick? It doesn't even roll off my tongue. <laughs> Who's going to remember that name? And everyone loves the title. You have a new season coming up and really some cool stuff you guys are yeah. covering. I love how this is a mixture between reality and sitcom. Yes. And you're tackling so many relevant issues. So talk to me about what everybody can expect with the new season. Well, one of the issues that we're tackling is cyberbullying, which is a real thing, you know, especially for young girls in high school. So I have a one on one meeting with a cyberbully. So that's one episode. Another mm -hmm. episode, one of my other favorite episodes is um, uh, same day. The prom. What is it? A promposal? A little same-sex dating Same-sex uh, uh, dating for prom, yeah. for high school. So, you know, it's very difficult sometimes for children, you know, who are gay to come out of the closet and be okay with that and be accepted. So we did this wonderful episode, and Lance Bass came and helped us with that one. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. And it's really... And you wouldn't expect anybody to be inviting me to their prom, but... Uh... <laughs> no, that was for Carter. Have Dr. Jason Seaver come. <laughs> What's unique is obviously this is such a different format than what you did for years. How is, you know, when you look back and obviously the, the show you were part of has now become iconic TV history. Does it blow your mind that this timelessness is maintained with the show? Uh, it does. I love it. I mean, we were proud of the show while we were doing it. And I think uh, time uh, it just makes you that much prouder that it has uh, established its own legacy and it's resonated uh, all these many years and uh, uh, young uh, men like yourself probably grew, grew up, up on, on exactly yeah. <laughs> I literally grew up and watching look, your show look That's how crazy. i've raised you you don't even wear a tie for god <laughs> you neither though like father like son <laughs> Putting your lives on camera, I'm always just fascinated. I'm so shy. I would have so much trouble. I would be like the little geek in the corner like this. Oh my God, there's a camera on me. What is it like for both of you and also your family to be able to, to share everything on camera? Well, I think, you know, being that Alan, you know, has been in Hollywood for so long and we've exposed Carter, our son, to so many, you know, red carpets and events. I think all three of us were actually very comfortable in front of the camera. You put a camera in front of me and I'll speak to you all day. I have no problem. For you, Alan, when you look at your career, the longevity of it, you to, to, to make it in this business and to stay around for a long time, you have to consistently reinvent yourself. How have you been able to stay relevant and keep this career going? Well, the trick is to get canceled often <laughs> and, uh, and make sure that you get fired every 13 <laughs> weeks or so, and then uh, you get to reinvent yourself. Uh, in my case, uh, uh, I've enjoyed the variety of my career. I've been able to do a bunch of things. If I had ever been fabulous at any one thing, I would have stuck with that. <laughs> if I could have been uh, 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 Al Pacino or Chris Rock or Robin Thicke, I would have stayed with that. But instead, I could do a bunch of things okay, and it's uh, led to a wonderful life. He's, he's being so modest. I think you've done a lot of things really great, and that's why we all live this wonderful life that you've given us, honey. So don't well, as don't long as sell my yourself. wife thinks that, you know, I'll have a I'll I'll have some and crazy weekends. I think also Alan is really young at heart, and that's why he loves young women, and so he had to marry a young woman like myself because. <laughs> He's, he's actually younger than I am. I'm the mature one in this relationship, believe it or not. And I think that's his longevity is the fact that he's so youthful. He has such a youthful spirit. When you meet him, it does it, is it like, oh, my God, that's 
Dr. Seaver right there? Or is it on like- On our first date? Well, first of all, when I was younger, all my friends had a crush on Kurt Cameron. And I was like, you know, the dad's kind of sexy. <laughs> and they were like, ew, it was a sleepover. They were all grossed out. And look at me now, I'm married to Dr. Seaver. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow up on that. <laughs> That's like the soundbite of all soundbites. Ironically, uh, I'm, I, I'm on an episode of Fuller House this year where I, where Candace Cameron Bure, the other Kirk's yep. uh, sister, sets me up on a date uh, with a friend of hers. And as you can imagine, that demographic doesn't quite work. <laughs> so uh, it, it's a small world of television, too. Well, Candace and I are the same age, so it makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just spoke to her last week. She's the sweetest, she's, by the way. She's so nice. I, I, yeah. I, I really talked to her about the girl. new season of View, and I'm like, Candace, you don't age. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. she, she doesn't, doesn't age at all. And she, we're the same age. I don't age either. So that's why we love each other now. I think she's just one of the nicest girls. I think Candace yeah. is really sweet. Yeah. We're going to be doing a live portion right after this, but before we do, I was just at the Toronto International Film Festival, and one of the crazy things about Alan is he's one of the most famous people to ever come out of Canada. <laughs> Talk to me about what Canada means to you. Well, I've got to know. He has a star walk of fame. Oh, okay, I don't want to give away what's happening next, but that's going to play into <laughs> it. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about Canada, what it means to you to be one of the faces of Canada that made it in this business. Uh, you know, I, I was one of the earlier ones, at least in television, uh, back in the 70s, who braved... Uh, uh, well, we didn't have a wall we had to climb over back then uh, to get into to get into the country. The beautiful wall. I'm awesome. sure it was a beautiful wall with a big logo but, on it. Yeah, there. yeah. I can tell you that. Uh, and uh, and would, the Canadians would have paid for it, of course. But uh, uh, back then there were fewer of us. Uh, we were kind of the. Uh, you know, reverse underground railroad of, of television at the time. There were uh, producers from Canada who were bringing in some young guns, like myself. Lorne Michaels yep. uh, came in around the same time, and, and several actors and comics. And uh, all these many years later, uh, I've always felt comfortable and, and rewarded even as being kind of grandfathered into that whole process to the point that now uh, uh, the uh, you know, this country's lousy with Canadians now. We've got them in every part you of the industry. You Bieber in. They, uh, well, the, the music industry alone, now you've got, dominated. you got The Weeknd, you got Bieber, you got Drake, Drake yep. you got Carly Rae, you got Robin Thicke's half Canadian. So, uh, so you know, I'm very proud to see the way my country has grown in the arts and, and made their contribution globally. And uh, America, after all, is what makes all that happen. You know, we, none of us from these other countries could really, truly make it unless we had that stamp of, improve, of approval in, in the States. Uh, you know, the, the English feel it. the same way. We all love being accepted here. <laughs> Thank you so much. See, that, that, that's where I met my beautiful wife, was in this country. It's true. That's right. You guys are awesome. Congratulations on the new season of Unusually Thick. Make Thank sure to catch you. it on Pop. And uh, you guys are freaking awesome. Congratulations. <laughs>